Hi there and welcome to this getting started video on how to use the synth zone inside of Hellion 6. In this video we're going to take a look at some traditional synthesizer architecture and look at the building blocks that you can use or put together to create a more sophisticated and complex sound. To start with we need to create a program and the programs are housed down the bottom in the program table. So I've dragged a program up and now up in my program tree I'm going to create a new layer and inside that layer I'm going to create a synth zone. And straight away we've got sound. Sound is generated in many different ways. For sound to happen we need to have some sort of cause. It could be a hammer or a bow or strumming or plucking on a string causing it to vibrate. Synthesizers use oscillators to generate waves. Now a wave is generated by turning an electrical signal on or off. Hellion 6 has three main oscillators and a sub oscillator all capable of playing different waves. But what is a wave? Well let's look at it in its most basic format and that's a sine wave. A sine wave is really one frequency. For a more complex sound we can start adding harmonics in. So higher frequencies and you see what happens to the waveform. So what happens is the oscillator is generating this wave over and over and over again so many times per second. The faster it generates it, the higher the pitch. The slower it generates it, the lower the pitch. So this is the most basic wave, a sine wave. If we move over to something different, like a triangle, you'll see that it's generated slowly and then it's released slowly, giving it the shape of the wave. It contains a fundamental harmonic, which is the lowest, and then a series of harmonics on top of it. And this will give it a more complex sound. A saw wave will give us a different shape. Straight away the signal comes on and then there's a slope to release it so it's gradually released. And if you take a look at the harmonics you'll notice there's a lot more of them there giving it a more complex sound. Moving along we've got the square wave and the square wave is named the square wave for obvious reasons. You can see it's turned on straight away, the sound is on and then it's turned off straight away. It has a very distinctive sound and is very close in relation to some of the other basic waves. For instance, the pulse wide wave. Once again, you can see it's turned on, then off, then back on again. You can narrow that trough by changing to the pulse narrow. A nice technique to make sound more interesting is to add noise in with the oscillators and we can use white noise or pink noise to make a sound more interesting. The real magic of synthesis comes once you start mixing or combining different oscillators with different waves. You can also add a sub, a ring modulator, and as I mentioned before, noise. Inside the oscillator wave menu you will have noticed that it says square PWM, well that's pulse width modulation. You can use the waveform parameter to change the makeup of the square wave. At 50 it's a perfect square wave, but as you move it up and down you'll change that trough to wide and narrow. It's not just about mixing oscillators and their waveforms together. Tuning or pitch plays a large role in synthesizers. Each of these oscillators has multi-oscillator capabilities and you can have up to eight different oscillators going at any one point in time, all tuned together in sync or against each other. For sound to actually occur in the first place, something must generate it and that's an oscillator. It doesn't matter whether it's a string, a synthesizer or a building. Everything oscillates at a particular frequency and that frequency will give us the pitch. Without going too in depth, there's a number of different algorithms that you can choose in the wave drop down menu to make the sound even more interesting. Each one provides a different option on how these oscillators are syncing to each other or even using things like cross modulation. So using one modulator to control the pitch of a slave modulator. I'll explain this in greater detail later. For now, let's quickly finish up in the oscillator section so we can continue to move through this synth zone and look at everything that makes up a synthesizer inside a Hellion 6. Most EDM producers are going to love adding noise into the equation, but next to that we've got the ring modulator, which brings two signals together to create even further modulation. It's got quite an eerie metallic characteristic, and it can be hard to control, but when you get it right, it allows you to do things that you can't do with any other oscillator. The next huge part of a synthesizer is the filter section. You can select different filter types in Hellion and also use the cutoff to chop off the harmonics. So that's what a cutoff is doing. It's actually reducing the amount of harmonics down to the fundamental harmonic or frequency. The resonance parameter will let us boost the amplitude of the cutoff frequency, giving us that wah-wah type of feedback effect. Really, if you want to get technical, it's actually oscillating or self-oscillating even further to once again add more characteristic to the sound. Filtering can cause some interesting and sometimes often unwanted sound characteristics. And one way of avoiding this is using the key follow, so you're actually setting the filter to follow the notes that you're playing on your external MIDI controller. 
You can do the same with the velocity parameter. And don't be afraid if it doesn't sound quite right. It's a matter of tweaking it so that you get a sharper or clearer picture of the sound that you're trying to achieve. There's a number of different filter type options and a lot of these filter type options will come with their own distortion. We can achieve completely different sounds by changing the shape of the filter. We can involve different filter shapes or even combinations of filter shapes to further continue to filter out the sound. And it's interesting how one thing affects the other. So for instance, as I change the different types of shape, things like the noise might be more prevalent or the distortion. So of course, once again, it's a juggling act where you're trying to balance the actual tone generation where you're generating the sound with the filter where you're removing different qualities. Once again, it's always a matter of practice. I'm constantly going back to my oscillators and at the moment I can hear some sort of pitch issue which I suspect is probably the cross modulation and it's just not set correctly so I'm just making a few small tweaks to try and tidy that up a little bit. The next massive part of synthesizer architecture is the envelope section. Now the envelope generator allows us to create motion over time. We create this motion by changing the attack, decay, sustain, release, which is basically saying when, how loud, how fast, how long do I stay this loud for, and then when do I go back to the start. These envelopes don't just relate to volume, we can apply them over a number of different things to create motion or different motion across a number of different parts of our synthesizer. Try messing around with the envelope amount inside of the filter section and then start drawing yourself in a filter envelope. You can then use the XY graphic control inside of the filter to create different sounds. There's presets everywhere inside of Hellion, so you can go over to the right triangle and add one of the factory presets. And see how different that movement is straight away, and that's only involving the actual filter itself. It's worthwhile having a play around with the presets, and of course, if you come up with your own, you can save it just as an envelope. It might only be at this point in time that you start defining your sound, and it could be a matter of once again moving the filter around or even just changing the envelope amount. So this sound just got quite interesting for me. And we're involving motion or movement, not just through using something like an arpeggiator. We're actually creating that movement once again through the filter. Pitch is also an interesting one. If we go up to the pitch section, and then add the envelope amount to the pitch section. Now we can start controlling pitch inside of the envelope. And this is pitch for one note. So if I press down on a note and make some changes to the envelope, this is the behavior or the motion that's happening every time the note is triggered. Okay, it's gonna be pretty crazy dragging this the whole way up. But I'm sure a few of you are sitting back going, ah, okay, I recognize that quality of sound from maybe something that they've heard in an EDM production. So we've generated the sound using a number of different types of oscillators. We've seen that we can add noise to it. We can filter it using a number of different filter types and filter shapes. And then we can add an envelope to the volume, to the pitch, to the filter, and also a user-defined area. Okay, that's enough, I'm moving on. And further down below me in this synth zone, I've got a low frequency oscillator. Now, it's still an oscillator, but it's oscillating at a lower frequency to the oscillators we're using to generate sound. And we're not using this oscillator to generate sound. Basically, we're setting up a modulation matrix that says, attach this LFO to the cutoff and attach this much of it. And now that wave, that sine wave that you can see in the low frequency oscillator, is now controlling my cutoff. I can select different wave types which are going to give me different characteristics and I can change the shape of the waves or the frequency. So that's the frequency of the oscillation. I can also change the actual curve down in the matrix modulation, which will give me a different quality of sound. You can draw in your own curve by the way if you want to. You can sync up this low frequency oscillator, which is pretty handy if you're working to a specific tempo. And of course, moving the phase will move the wave forwards or backwards. It's worth having a good play around with this modulation matrix. It's mind blowing in terms of being able to assign one parameter to another parameter. And you've got so many different modulation matrix rows there. So you're not just working with one particular thing. 
Envelopes are everywhere. And I can even assign an envelope over the top of my low frequency oscillator. Pretty cool, huh? Next up, let's bring our step modulator into play. Now the step modulation gives us a series of steps where we can have a positive value or a negative value. And we can send this step modulator once again using the modulation matrix to control different parameters. The step modulator can also give us a lot of movement, but it, it's really good at helping us sync to a particular tempo, but also giving us complete control over a parameter. So we're not using predefined waves. We're actually setting our own parameter for each step in the step modulator. We can assign curves as well. So we could start to build different types of waveforms if we want. That's a very basic walkthrough of the synthesizer architecture inside of the synth zone in Hellion 6. But of course, last and certainly not by any means least important, we've got the mix engine or the mixer section where we can go and add an audio bus to this one layer and we can start adding audio effects to the sound that we've created. I've done a whole video on the mix engine inside of Hellion, so please make sure you go and check that out. In the meantime, you can see that inside of this audio bus, I can add a number of audio inserts. And of course, the sound is flowing from top to bottom through this program tree. You may not always want to add inserts over the top of the signal flow. You might want to set up auxiliary buses, which you can also do inside of Hellion. And of course, you can change the master outputs. Synthesizers are fun. They're actually quite easy to use once you understand the bare basics. And this synth zone inside of Hellion 6 is unlike anything else. In the macro page video, I'm going to show you how you can put a front end onto this synthesizer to create your very own instrument that you can share with other users inside of the Hellion family. I'll catch you there.